Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA Shield Android TV in 2022 to see if it would still be worth picking one up for emulation, 4K video playback, native Android gaming, or cloud gaming. Now these are still going for $199, we get 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and it comes with one of my favorite additions to the Shield line, their new remote. Unfortunately, they don't sell these with controllers anymore, but you can always pair any kind of Bluetooth controller. Personally, I use an Xbox One controller, but a PS4 or a PS5 controller should pair right up with it. And even though they're calling this the Pro model, it only comes with 16 gigabytes of internal storage, but I always use a USB drive. This is a 128 gigabyte SanDisk USB drive, and mainly what I store on this are extra movies and ROMs for my emulators. The internal 16 gigabytes on the unit itself has been plenty for all of the apps I want to install, be it uh, native Android games, all of my streaming apps, and emulators. I've really never run out of space with that, and that's all because I use external storage when it comes to my larger files. But you know, the basic hardware has pretty much been the same since the original NVIDIA Shield TV was released. We've got that Tegra X1 CPU with 3 gigabytes of RAM, so in this video we're going to see how it holds up in 2022. And by the end of this video, it'll give you a good idea if it's still worth picking up. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so a lot hasn't really changed with the interface here, but one major thing has been added, and that's ads. Something that a lot of users really didn't like. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it. This is a $200 device. I don't think we should have ads up front here. Now, there are ways around it. You can install a third-party launcher. You can disable Google Play services, but then you're going to run into some apps that just won't work without Google Play services enabled. This has really been added to all devices that use Google TV, but, you know, I really do think that NVIDIA and Google dropped the ball here, given that this is such an expensive device when it comes to Android TV boxes. The Chromecast with Google TV comes in at around, what is it, $65? This is a $200 device. I really don't think we need ads up front. Now, when it comes down to it, first and foremost, this is a 4K media device. This is for consuming media from your favorite apps, HBO Go, Hulu, Showtime, Netflix, YouTube, and it does 4K video playback really well, whether you're streaming or natively playing from a hard drive, USB drive, or even a NAS. And the Pro model, which we have here, can actually be turned into a Plex server. If you go with the non-Pro model, you can still use Plex, but it can't be turned into a server. So what I have running here is YouTube 4K 60fps, one of my old go-to videos to test here. We've got zero drop frames so far, and I can let this play through all the way, even on Wi-Fi, and not get any drop frames 4K 60. I've always had really good luck with the NVIDIA Shields and 4K video playback, and now we're actually getting some cheaper devices that do 4K pretty well, like the S905X4 Android boxes. I've had really good luck with those, but for the past few years, this has really been the go-to device if you want good 4K playback. So streaming works out really well with basically any app that supports 4K, and even native playback. 4K 60 HDR, this is actually running from a 128GB USB drive plugged into one of the free USB ports. When it comes to native Android TV gaming, the market has really been stagnant. I mean, we have the same games that we had when this thing launched. There are some games that work on this box that don't work on others, like Half-Life 2, it's a native port for the NVIDIA Shield. Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel have also been ported over to this, and they do work really well on the Shield TV. But, you know, we haven't got anything really new in a while, and it's very stagnant when it comes to native Android gaming on these TV boxes. So the next best thing would be cloud gaming, and this does come with GeForce Now. I'm a huge fan of it. I've been subscribed for a while, and this will allow you to play some really awesome PC games on this without PC hardware. It also supports Stadia. You can actually download it directly from the Google Play Store. If you want to stream from your own PC in the house or out of the house, you could go with Steam Link or Moonlight. But one of my favorite things to use on these Android devices is Xbox Cloud Gaming. It used to be known as xCloud, and you will have to sideload this, but it is fully working here. I'm going to go ahead and start up Forza Horizon 5, and whenever I do any kind of cloud gaming, I always plug in over Ethernet. It just makes the experience much better. You don't get the cleanest picture like you would with GeForce Now or Stadia, but in my opinion, this is playable. Unfortunately, they haven't done any kind of upscaling with the Android TV version or even the Android version of xCloud yet. 
Hopefully that comes down the road, something to clean up the edges a bit, but it does work as you can see here. So it's still great for game streaming and 4K video playback, but you know one of the main reasons I always used the Shield in the past was for emulation. So what I want to do now is just check out some of our favorite emulators running on the Shield in 2022. We're going to start off light here with uh, DS. We're going to use the Drastic Emulator, and this should work just fine here. The Drastic Emulator is really the best DS emulator that you can get for Android, and we'll go ahead and load up Astro Boy here. Just start the game and I'll get right into some gameplay. With this setup here, as you can see, I have the dual screens going, but it's already set up for your controller. So if you press R3 or N on your right analog stick, it'll bring up a single screen. That way we have a bigger screen for a gameplay section. And when it comes to emulation on the Shield TV, you're going to be good to go with all the lower end stuff. NES, PC Engine, Neo Geo, you want to do some FBA, CPS 1, 2, and 3 is going to work just fine. SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and as you can see, DS here. And it also does a really good job with the higher end emulators, but this chip is getting a bit dated. Let's go ahead and move over to Dreamcast. I'm going to be using the standalone version of Redream here. And this is available from the Google Play Store on the Shield. You don't have to sideload anything here. This is Sega Rally Championship 2. We're at 1280 by 960, running at full speed. FPS is up in the top left-hand corner. I prefer using the Redream emulator on the NVIDIA Shield, but when it comes down to it, you could always use Flycast in RetroArch or a standalone version. It's really up to you. Next on the list, the Shield definitely has you covered with N64 emulation. You can use RetroArch with the Moopin Core. I prefer using the Moopin 64 Plus FZ standalone emulator from the Google Play Store. We've got GoldenEye 007. I am upscaled a bit here, and it's running great. I mean, this is fully playable in my opinion. When it comes to PSP emulation on the NVIDIA Shield, I've always had a little bit of struggle with the God of War games. Here's Chains of Olympus, and with this I did have to turn a couple hacks on, and we're only at 1x resolution. When it comes to some other easier to emulate games, you can go all the way up to 4x, whether you want to use Vulkan or OpenGL, but with these harder to emulate games, you might have to stick it down to 1x with OpenGL. And you know, with all of the updates to the app itself and the operating system, I figured I'd be good to go with Vulkan on this game, but I did have to go to OpenGL. Even at 1x with Vulkan, I was still getting a lot of stutters. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was a little bit of GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. I personally download the development builds from the official website and sideload them. Some games are going to run at full speed on this device, but when you get up to the harder to emulate stuff like Automotalista and even F-Zero, it's just not going to do it. When it comes to the Tegra X1 in 2022, on the GPU side of things, for GPU performance, it's still a great performer. But if we take a look at the CPU performance side of this little chip here, it's not even coming close to some of the mid-range chips that have been released in the last few years. So I can only get Geekbench 4 to install and run on the Shield. I can't even get Geekbench 5 to install on this. But single core, 1433 on the Shield TV. Multi, 4010. When we take a look at the Google Pixel 4a, which has the Snapdragon 730. 2436 single, multi, 5740. So when it comes to CPU performance, the Snapdragon 730 has the Tegra X1 beat. And taking a look at GPU performance... For 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme on the Shield TV, we got a 4,057. On the Pixel 4a, we only got a 2,481. So the Tegra X1 is still rocking that GPU performance, but you know with a lot of these newer emulators, CPU is really where it's at. So should you buy one in 2022? Well, it really all depends. I mean, if you've already got a TV that does pretty good 4K video playback from your favorite apps, then you should be good to go. Really, what we need here is a new NVIDIA Shield TV for 2022. I've recommended this device for a very long time, and still to this day, I think it is the best standalone Android TV box that you can purchase. But with all of these new additions to the on-screen ads and things like that, it might make you think twice about picking one up in 2022. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're still interested in picking up an NVIDIA Shield TV, I will leave a couple links in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.